Okay, we have an interesting chapter in Nehemiah chapter 3 of the gates and wall of Jerusalem being built. There are 38 individual men mentioned by name. <clears throat> then Elisha, the high priest, that's the priest of the priest, of Aaron, rose up. This is after Nehemiah, Nehemiah said, okay, let's build, let's take care of the city. At that moment, Elijah stands up, instant, rose up with his brethren. That would be the family of Aaron, not just Levi. He's the high priest, his brethren, those that can trace their lineage back to Aaron. His brethren, the priests, not Levites, well, they're Levites, but remember, priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And they built it the sheep gate. This is the first gate mentioned. They built the sheep gate. You'll find this in Jeremiah 31, 38. And this is where the sheep would go through. Sheep gate. They sanctified it. Means they sanctified means set apart. They anointed it. They made it holy for God. Sanctify it and set up the doors of it. Even unto the tower meal. So there's a tower there. And sanctified it, the tower. And unto the tower of Haniel. Okay. Now. I want to go to verse 3 real, real quick. Verse 3 says. But the fish gate. Did the sons of Haniah build. Who also laid the beams thereof. Now this is the gate. Set up the doors thereof. The locks thereof. And the bars thereof. Now we go back to verse 1. The sheep gate. Alright there are doors. But it's interesting. It does not say locks and bars and when we go through this chapter and we look at the gates there's locks and bars why is the sheep gate have no locks or bars and jesus said i am i am the chief shepherd i am the door of the sheep and the door has no locks isn't that interesting there's no locks to jesus when you come in the bible says if one sheep goes out and and repents and gets right the angels in heaven rejoice and this sheep gate has no locks or bars. I don't think it's omitted. Because every other uh, gate in this chapter has locks and bars. And next. Now that next shows up 12 to And next shows up 12 times in this chapter. Next itself. The word next shows up 15 times. And next. So we're at the tower of Haniel. And next unto the tower. Next unto the, the wall. On him builded the men of Jericho. That's a cursed city. A city that's been cursed by Joshua. Now here come the men of Jericho to build. And next. When you see and next. It's the next portion. To them. Builded Zachor the son of Imri. Alright. Now but the fish gate. A lot of these gates are self-explanatory. The fish gate, probably where the fishermen would come in, where they bring fish. Did the sons of Hananiah build? He uh, who also laid the beams thereof, set the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. So this gate is locked. And next unto them repaired. Marioth, the, Marioth, the son of Uri Elijah. Now he's going to be mentioned. There are three names going to be mentioned twice in building. This is the first one. You'll find him in chapter 3, verse 21. We'll come back and read. He does the work of two. In two different areas of this wall. The son of Kuz. And next, unto them repaired Mishalom. The son of Berechiah, the son of Mishdiel. He's another one that shows up in chapter 30, verse 3, thir uh, chapter 3, verse 30. Next unto him repaired Zadok, the son of Bana. Bana. Next unto him, the Tekoites. They'll show up in chapter, chapter 3, verse 27. Those are the three people who work the fish gate, and they'll show up again. 
No, Christians are not representative of fish. Fish is a reptile, not the fish symbol of Christianity. That's a lie. Next to them, Tekoa repaired, but, watch this, but their nobles, the higher up people, put not their necks to the, to the work of their Lord. All right, they're serving God, but they're not doing it right. They're doing it to do it. They're not putting their heart into it. That little note there. And these little notes that the Holy Spirit puts in here are interesting. They, they didn't really do the work. The noble people. Moreover, the old gate repaired Jehoiada, the son of Pasha, the Mishalim, the son of Bes Besodiah, laid the beams thereof, set up the doors thereof, and the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. That sheep gate don't have no locks or bars. That bars would go across the gate. You've seen that. A latch. And next on him repaired Melida the Gibeonite, and Jadon the Merithite, the men of Gibeon, and a Mizpah. That's been shown throughout the Bible, Mizpah. Unto the throne of the governor on this side of the river, Ephrates. So along the wall of Jerusalem is where the throne of the land sits, the governor. Next. Now that's his next. Next. Not and next. Next. Unto him repaired Uziel, the son of Hariah, of the goldsmith. Now that goldsmith is the first time goldsmith shows up. And the only other time it shows up is in chapter 3, 20, 32. Chapter 3, verse 32 is the only other time it shows up. I mean, these are the ones that, that Jeremiah will yell at or making idols later. I've done it before. Jeremiah's before. These are the ones who were making the golden idols that got the land into Babylon, angry with God. Now they're building the wall. Next, next, unto him also repaired Hehiah, the son of one of the apothecaries, that's a druggist. That's the only time that word shows up. And they fortified Jerusalem unto the broad wall. So here's the broad wall. And there's a complete description of where we're going around the city. And next, and next, we had two next in verse 8. Now we're back to, and, I don't know why, but and next. Unto them repaired Rephiah, the son of Hur, the ruler of the half part of Jerusalem. So here's another authority of the government working on the wall. And he's half the ruler. There's no king, remember. Kings are going to Jesus Christ. And next unto them repaired Jediah, the son of Harthba, even unto you against his house. So here's a man, he's building the wall of, of Jerusalem, and he's building the section where his house is. That's interesting. Note as we keep reading about this wall. And next unto him repaired Hadish, the son of Hashabaniah. Malkajah, the son of Hiram, and Hushbeth, the son of Path of Moab, that's an interesting name, repaired the other piece. Uh, you know. And the tower, okay, we come to a tower, and the tower of the furnaces. That's the first time that word shows up. And the other place, the only other place it shows up is in chapter 12, verse 38, furnace. And you can find these on a map online. We're tracing ourselves around the city of Jerusalem. And next, unto him repaired Shalom, the son of Helchis, the ruler of the half part of Jerusalem. Now we just met the other ruler in verse 9. Here's the other ruler in verse 12. There are two rulers, no more kings, in Jerusalem, and both of them are working on the wall. That would be, you know, their prime minister they have today. 
I mean, Israel has a president, but he has no power. Now watch this. He and his daughters are working. Look at the Holy Spirit in there. His daughters are helping their dad build the, build the wall. And they're the half ruler. They're, you know, you wouldn't expect to see anybody in England or anybody in America or anybody in Russia of upper class government doing mediocre work unless it was in front of the eyes of the cameras and eyes of, you know, well, we're going to do it so people can see me. And here they're taking part. The Valley Gate repaired Hanum, Hanum, and the inhabitants of Zena. They built it. They set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, the bars thereof, and a thousand cubits of the wall, even unto the Dung Gate. So these are, they built from, here. They built from gate to gate. Now let's. Take a little break here, go to chapter 2, verse 12. Chapter 2, verse 12. Nehemiah, when he's going about the city, and I rose in the night, I and some few men with me, neither told I any man what my God has put in my heart to do in Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I rode upon. And I went out by night, by the gate of the valley, here we are, before the dragon well, and to the to the dung port, and viewed the walls of Jer Jerusalem, which were broken down. So here we are in chapter two, verse thirteen. Here's where Nehemiah views the wall, broken down the cities, the valley gate, and the dung gate. Somewhere here, there's a there's a dragon well, but it's not mentioned. Again, the dung gates were all the washing of the city, all the filth went out. But the dung gate repaired Malcolm, the son of Rechab, the ruler of part of Beth Akram. He built it, set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. Again, that sheep gate has no locks. Thank God that God didn't put no locks on the on the Jesus Christ for us to be saved. But the gate of the fountain. Now, is that the fountain? It says dragon well, but here we're at the fountain gate. Repair Shalom, the son of Kutha, the, the ruler of the part of Mizpah. He built it and covered it, covered it, set it up, the doors thereof, the locks thereof. This one has some kind of covering. And the bars thereof, and the wall of the pool of Sh Shiloh. Shiloh. Let's stop there for a minute. Let's take a little interest in something here. John 9, 7. John 9, 7. Let's take a little interesting note where we are on the wall. Building. John 9, 7. About this pool. And Jesus, this is Jesus said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Shalom, there it is, which is by the, which is by the interpretation sent, means sent. And he went that way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. We are at the place right now where, where Jesus sends the blind man to go, I don't know if they're there, but he sends them to this pool of Shalom. The man comes to this pool and washes and comes out seeing. Here we are. Where else is there? By the king's garden. That must have been beautiful. Not, I wouldn't be the king's garden. I wouldn't be just no, you know, here's some tomatoes and cucumbers. And, you know, no, it had to have been beautiful. So, okay, king's garden had to have been beautiful. Now, I don't know what it is in the time of Jesus, but there it is. And if it's the same, imagine what that guy saw when he opened up his eyes. If that garden is still there, he saw beauty. 
But later on, he's going to remember, he said he doesn't see Jesus. Later on, he's going to see Jesus face to face. And then that's going to be the most beautiful thing he's ever saw in his life when he looks upon Jesus. I've never seen Jesus. You know, the same, there's the same thing, too, about this in the Bible. Mary, she's, she's sitting down, she's, she's weeping in the garden. And along comes a man. And the Bible says, oh, she's supposed to be the gardener. He ain't the gardener. He's the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we have a whole book of uh, song. We have a whole book of Song of Solomon about a garden and the beauty. Just thought that was interesting. The king's garden. And onto the stairs... Oh, you imagine the stairs in Jerusalem? I mean, this is, this is a mountain that go down. Oh, ooh, this one goes down from the city of David. That's Jerusalem. After him. Uh oh, we got a change. Now it's after him. 14 times after him. The word after shows up 16 times. We've gone from, I don't know why, and next. Now we're going after. We come down off the city of David. Repaired Nehemiah, the son of Asba. That is not the Nehemiah of the book of Nehemiah. The ruler of the half part of Beth Bethir unto the place over against the sepulchers of David. So now we know where David's sepulcher is. Where Peter will speak, we know that David's sepulchre is here. I think it's Acts chapter 2 or 3. There it is. To the pool that was made. So the pool wasn't there, it was made, the aqueduct. And unto the house of the mighty. That's kind of funny because you speak of the mighty, David's men. If that's the men of David, his warriors, he is buried by them. The mighty men of David. And after him. Repaired the Levites. Now they're not priests. But they're of that family. The priests are working on the sheep day. Now we come to where David is mighty men. Where David's buried. Now the Levites are working. Rahim the son of Benai. Next unto him. Repaired. Heshabiah. The ruler of the half part of Keliah. Unto his part. After him repaired their brethren. I don't know who their brethren is. Bavai. The son of Hanadad. The ruler of the half part of Keila. That, 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 you know that their brethren goes back to verse 17. And next unto him repaired Ezer. The son of Jeshua. The ruler of Mizpah. Another piece. Over against the going up now we're going back up the armory that's the first time armory shows up in the bible at the turning of the wall so now here we have military army one place i mean there's many places spoken about in the bible where they have you know garrisons but here's the armor i remember going up in, in new london there was there was an armory it would be good to go over there and look and see the military trucks and we would see the military trucks when they're going on maneuvers down the highway. So it would be something wonderful to see. Probably see the men marching, the men, the warriors. After him, Baruch, the son of Zabai. That's not the same Baruch of Jeremiah 32, 12. It's another one. Repair the other piece from the churning of the wall. They were churning the wall unto the door of the house of Elishab, the high priest. Notice, here's the high priest's house. Where is he building? He's building at the sheep gate. We already had a man. He's building by the wall where his house is. The high priest is not home building where his wall, his house is. He's over at the sheep gate, and it's important. The high priest is at the sheep gate. And his house is way, we're halfway through the chapter. Do you hear what I said? I said, the high priest is at the sheep gate working. He is halfway to where his house is. Jesus is down here with the ministry for the sheep. And his house is halfway in glory. And he ain't there. The high priest ain't home. He's at the sheep gate. With no locks and no bars. 
Glory, hallelujah. After him repaired Merab, the son of Uriah, the son of Coles. This is where he, the name is repeated. This man does two pieces. Another piece. Notice that it says another piece. From the door of the house of Elizabeth, even to the end of the house of Elizabeth. This guy is working by the fish gate. Chapter, uh, verse 3. Not the fish gate, but by it. And now he's working at where the high priest lives. What's the connection? I don't know. But I'm going to tell you right now, that fish is not Christian. It is not, it has not been the symbol of Christian. But Jesus said, and the Bible says about the Jewish people, I will fish you as fishers. As a fisherman. He called four of his disciples were fishermen. That fish is a resemble of lost Israel coming to Christ. So this man is going from the fish gate to the high priest gate. Home. It's no longer a fish. Glory, hallelujah. And after him repaired the priest. They're back at it. Other priests. They were in chapter, they were in verse 1. The men of the plain, probably maybe another group, or not maybe the same group. This uh, Elisha was not there. After him repaired Benjamin and Hashdod over against their house. Oh, see, now they're working by their house. Not the high priest. After him repaired Azariah, the son of Mashaliah, the son of Ananiah, by his house. Holy Spirit is showing that these men are working by their houses, but not the high priest. Jesus said, I go prepare a place for you. After repair, after him repaired Ben and I, the son of Henadab, another piece from the house of Azariah unto the churning of the wall, even to the corner. Palo, the son of Uzziah, over against the churning of the wall unto the tower. Here's another tower. Which lieth out from the king's high house. That was by the court of the prison. Now we're in the prison area. We're in the correctional area. After him, Pedadiah, the son of Purah. Moreover, the Nephilim. Look at them show up. Those are the ones that came to Joshua and said, hey, You know, our shoes are old. Our bread is moldy. And our wine balls are buzzing. Oh, please make a league with us. And they turned to be liars. They're the ones that are working close to King Solomon. These are Canaanites, the land of Canaan, that should be dead. Joshua said, okay, we're going to bless you. We're going to take care of you. And now they are here in Nehemiah building the city. They should have been dead. Be careful you bless in the name of the Lord. Because they are the enemies of God. God don't wipe them all out. The Nephilims dwelt in Ophiel unto the place over against the water gate. We have a water gate. Nixon had a water gate. The Bible has a water gate. Toward the east. And the tower, there's a tower there that lieth out. Steps out. After then the Tekalites, there they are again. They were previously mentioned in verse 5. <clears throat> but their nobles weren't all with it. Repaired another piece over against the great tower that lieth out even unto the wall of Phil. So they get a great, I wonder if their nobles were working with that one. Because the Bible says a great tower. Never mind my voice. Alright, so what's next? From above the horse gate, repaired the priest. That's kind of interesting. The Bible says that I am a priest, Revelation 1. I'm not father such and such. And the Bible says when Jesus Christ comes back in second advent, he's coming on a white horse and we're going to be following him. Isn't that interesting? And we're getting ready to come back to the sheep gate. I'd probably picture the second advent if you were to ask me. Even priests, everyone over against his house. So this is where the priests dwell. 
when Jesus mounts on that horse to come back, guess where he's leaving from? Where I dwell. In heaven. I just married the Lord Jesus Christ. I just became his bride. That's my home. Officially. By marriage. After then repairs Zadok, the son of Immer, over against his house. Oh, that's where he lives. After repaired also Shimei, the son of Shagniah, the keeper of the east gate. So this is a porter. You know, John chapter 10 mentions that Jesus said, you know, I have a sheep, they're Israel. I have other sheep, that's us. He says, I am the, the, the chief shepherd. I am the shepherd of the flock. I give my life for the sheep. He mentions a porter. You're seeing John chapter 10 right here. The keeper of the east gate is the porter. Now there's a gate, and I, think, I don't I don't know much about, it, but there's a gate supposedly closed in Jerusalem today that the Bible says it's not going to be open to Jesus come, no matter how many people have tried to blow that gate up and fail. Now we're coming back west to east through, like Joshua came into the land. And I don't know enough geography to maybe is that the path of the second advent? You know it's going to open up Jerusalem. To us, when we come through, the Holy Spirit, the Porter. Oh, here comes, here comes my Lord God and Savior, Jesus. I'm the Comforter. Come on through. We wait for you. After him, repair Hanai, the son of Shemuel, and her, the sixth son of Zephyr. Zephyr. I don't know why the sixth son, but the sixth son. If this is second, I think he just came out of six, six, six. Another piece. After him repaired Mishulam, the son of Berechiah, over against his chamber, his house. Chamber. He has a chamber. He doesn't have a house. A chamber is a room. After him repaired, I am with the name, Malkaka, the goldsmith's son, Even unto the place of the Nethanims, that's where they dwell. Nethanims are not working where they are dwelling. And of the merchants, merchants would be people who sell things, over against the gate, Mithka, and to the going up of the corner. So here's a goldsmith's son. It's quite interesting. What, what, what's that? Verse 32, and betwe between the going up of the corner unto the sheep gate, going up, you go up to go to the sheep gate, repaired the goldsmiths, and we're right back to chapter 1, and the merchants. The sons of the goldsmiths are working right with the goldsmiths, and they're not making idols to fall in God, but they are preparing the gate for the Lord Jesus Christ to come in. The Bible says the horses will have bells holy this to the Lord. And this every one of the the whole chapter laid out is about Jesus. The whole chapter laid out is about the second advent of Jesus, about the tribulation period, and then the second advent. And it's just wonderfully you could do messages upon messages. And it's John chapter 10. And as we finish this chapter, we saw. Gates, bars, doors, and locks. Yet when we come to that sheep gate, no bars and no locks. It's freely open for all to come in. Jesus said in John chapter 10, my sheep, that's Israel. Other sheep, that's us. One man lost, his, um, one man had a hundred sheep, one was lost, went out and found it, and all heaven rejoices over that one sheep. When you read Pilgrim's Progress, here comes Pilgrim coming into that city. It's not locked. It's not locked. When he came to the gate, the first house, he came to, there was a man standing, the door was locked, was bolted, he had to ask for permission. When he came to the, I forget what the house is called, the next one, he came to the gate, the gate was locked, it was closed. He had to wait for permission before the, before the daughters came out. 
But when he crosses that river and he comes into the heavenly city, there are gates. But to him, they were not locked. They were open to him. When that, I forget what the other guy's name is, who went about the roundabout way and crawled over the walls and done his own. When he came to the same place, it was locked. It was barred. And he was carried to go on the gnashing of deep into the lake of fire. There's no locks and bonds for the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Glory to God.